Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle Earth. Today I wanted to make a video that's a bit different from our normal lore videos, discussing how the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings films got the character of Faramir quite wrong, at least in the Two Towers, though some of this transfers over into the Return of the King movie as well. Now of course, I must say I love the Jackson films, and while this video will be critical of their take on Faramir, I have so much admiration and respect for all those who are involved with the making of these movies. But since I am a big fan of the book lore, I do believe that this portrayal of Faramir is perhaps the weakest characterization in the films, and is one of the biggest criticisms I have about the movies, if not the biggest. It is worth discussing, and hopefully this video raises some interesting points about the character, and how he was done far differently in the movies than in the books. My friends, thank you all so much for being here. Let's begin our tale. To best understand where the movies went astray with this character, let's look at some of the renowned quotes said by and to Faramir in the books to get a better view of his character. War must be, while we defend our lives against a destroyer who would devour all. But I do not love the bright sword for its sharpness, nor the arrow for its swiftness, nor the warrior for his glory. I love only that which they defend, the city of the men of Numenor, and I would have her loved for her memory, her ancientry, her beauty, and her present wisdom. Not feared, save as men may fear the dignity of a man old and wise. With this quote, we see that Faramir sees war only as necessary insofar that it is the only thing preventing a destroyer, a devourer, Sauron from overcoming all things of beauty and goodness in the world of men. Even of the warriors for the free, Faramir does not admire their warlike nature or their weaponry for their own sake, but rather for what such things are protecting. The city of Faramir's people, the history of its culture, and all good things about such things. Even at the end of his story, Faramir becomes the Prince of Athelion, stewarding the land of Athelion and seeing that its beauty comes to fruition alongside his wife Eowyn once more. But fear no more, I would not take this thing, if it lay by the highway. Not were Menas Tirith falling in ruin, and I alone could save her, so using the weapon of the Dark Lord for her good and my glory. No, I do not wish for such triumphs, Frodo, son of Drogo. With this quote, we see that Faramir does not seek power, and not only that, he does not seek power through pride, a power so great that could destroy himself and the world of men, even as he tries to save it in such an instance. He was different from other men, more kind, wise, and fair. Faramir was humble enough in the book to know that the ring could only do evil, even at the end of need, something Denethor himself could not see. I would see the white tree in flower again in the courts of the kings and the silver crown return, and menace Tirith in peace, menace Anor again as of old, full of light, high, and fair. Faramir regards the history of his people with reverence and love, and we also know that he had an affinity for art, culture, and music. Ever since he was young, he had loved the lore and teachings of Gandalf, but wished only to see the world of men in its most beautiful state. The world of the West, and its king renewed. He had strength, but strength that was different from other men, like his brother Boromir. For a last quote here, but there are many more in the books. Ah, oh, well, sir, said Sam, you said my master had an elvish air, and that was good and true. But I can say this, you have an air too, sir, that reminds me of, of, well, Gandalf, of wizards. Maybe, said Faramir. Maybe you discern from far away the air of Numenor. Good night. Even near the end of the Hobbit's interactions with the rangers in Henneth Annun, the secret outlook, Sam sensed the wisdom and presence of Faramir in a way that seemed very powerful of the man, reminding Sam of Gandalf and his wisdom. And Faramir is clearly a descendant of Numenor, who, like Aragorn, carried much of what was fair in that lost kingdom, even in later days. While Faramir was less hardy and kingly than Aragorn, he was very much like his king, whom he addressed as such the moment they met. We know that Faramir observes customs that honor Numenor and the elven lands of old, such as looking west before a meal. 
Farmir was a student of history and lore. He cared for art and culture, for the past, for the meek, for the beauty of mankind. In many ways, he was the philosophical musings of Tolkien in The Lord of the Rings. Most like him, most like the author himself, for even Tolkien stated that of his characters, Faramir was the most like him. Now, turning our attention to the films, the characterization of Faramir is far less favorable. Now, to be fair, in the Two Towers movie, we do see hints of the character we see in the book, with him saying something Sam actually thought about in the book, wondering if a man of the South was evil at heart, and wondering about what drove him to war. We see more of this gentle side of him in the Return of the King film, as noted by Pippin's conversation about Faramir's different sort of strength. And indeed, all respect to the actor, David Winham, for his performance. What the Two Towers movie got wrong was making Faramir a villain of sorts to Frodo. Indeed, his susception to corruption from the One Ring in that film was set up for all the world of men true. But what in some ways bothers me more is how Faramir treated Frodo and Sam in captivity and did not listen to them with an open, gentle heart, and he even let his men beat Gollum, while again, almost being corrupted by the ring like his brother was. Even Faramir multiple times grabs Gollum by the throat after changing his mind on taking Frodo back to Minas Tirith with the ring, and subsequently letting him go. When Frodo, Sam, and Gollum leave the city of Osgiliath, Gollum is clearly left wounded by his last encounter with Faramir, limping and holding up his hand as he crawls. Perhaps some of this was performative of Gollum to offer a bit of a counter-argument to this. Maybe Gollum was trying to get the sympathy of the hobbits, but even if that is true, Faramir, a large, strong man of Gondor, clearly did hurt Gollum. And to be honest, I doubt it was too performative on Gollum's side of things. These moments make Faramir far different from the philosophies, almost directly opposite to them, that he espouses in the books. Rather than being a man of gentle heart who opposes violence and war unless it is absolutely necessary to protect the good, the ancient, and the magnificent, Faramir in the movies seems too open to adopting tactics of intimidation, fear, and pain. Even manipulation when he lures Gollum out of the pool. There is a version of this in the book of the Two Towers, but it does seem far more cruel in the movie. Perhaps. Any other soldier in Faramir's position who had seen and lost so much in war, who was not loved by his father and lost his mother at a young age, might become such a man as we see in the movie. But Faramir is not just any other soldier, not in the books. I do believe this is one of the greatest shortcomings in the adaptations which are the Lord of the Rings films, which, again, I must say that I do love overall. But this change does bother me the more I age, the more that I come to appreciate the gentleness and wisdom of the character of Faramir in the books. In a world full of grim warriors and killers on both sides of war, a wise warrior who reflects on his actions that they may act in service of his people and their culture, and not just for violence or for one's sake of pride, is a welcome addition. In the books, Frodo regards Faramir as a friend unlooked for, like the ones Elrond foretold to the Hobbit. Yet this is not really what we see in the Two Towers film, unfortunately. I understand that since the film cut back and forth between the different stories of our characters, and Peter Jackson wanted to stay true to the timeline of the books, changes, especially in Frodo's plot in the Two Towers, had to be made to add more conflict and so forth. And while there are many other things they could have done for this, staying true to the source material, I do wish they had taken a path far more favorable to the character of Faramir. He isn't of the same sort of moral complexity as his brother. No, Faramir is a complex character because he is such a beacon of light and hope and compassion in a world at war. Faramir also misses many of those Houses of Healing moments from the Return of the King book in the film, which takes away even more opportunities to show his true nature. Once more, I have so much love and praise for the films, but I believe that, at least at this point in time, the Faramir change from a wise and compassionate sage in the books to a more brutish and heedless warrior in the movies is my least favorite change in all of the three Lord of the Rings movies. And I do wish that the wonderful character that Tolkien had written and had seen himself in had been more preserved for the screen. With all of that said, we come to the end of our tale on how the films got Faramir wrong. From Faramir, his story and quotes, we see that a wise and kind heart counts for much in a time of darkness and war. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this very different kind of video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. 
What are your thoughts on these changes to the character of Faramir from the books to films? Let me know in the comments below. This has been on my mind for some time, so I'm glad to share my passion for the book version of Faramir and my wishes that the film rendition had been closer to the character we get in the source material. I am very curious to read your responses. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider getting some candles from our friends Mythology Candles through the link in the description below. Please check out our merch and Patreon. Thanks to our Valor Tier patrons and YouTube members, Peter Shepard, Jonathan Booten, and Mark Kralik, Blair Scott, and Merton, John Hume, Sam McBee, Matt Sabach, Elizabeth Calvert, Maz Gibbs, Reese Jenkins, Adam Petrolake, Anthony Harmon, Dorwin Gray, Arthur Merlin, Dale Davis, Kingswall Project, and Robert Bogue, our newest Valor Tier patron. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today. I'll see you all again next Sunday with a video on Azog and Balg. You all are the best, my friends. Thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one.